Okay, everyone, <clears throat> let's stop here for a moment and talk about how caves are developed. All right, here we see leaves and grass and soil. And as the rainfall filters through these materials, it becomes a very, very weak acid called carbolic acid. And carbolic acid dissolves limestone. You'll see here that the rainwater has collected in cracks in the limestone. And over time, the limestone begins to dissolve and the crack gets wider and wider. If you look at this next diagram, the water has actually created a cave with a stream flowing through it. The entrance to the cave has collapsed, forming a sinkhole. The cave has gotten wider as the water's gone through it, and in places, the cave has gotten so wide that the ceiling has actually collapsed, forming more sinkholes on the surface and breakdown blocks down inside the cave. Speleothems, such as stalagmites and stalactites, have also formed. Everybody understand how caves are formed now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, great. Let's go caving. Look, Miss Russell, a bag. Very good, Joel. What you found is an eastern pipistrelle bat, which is common in this area. This is a good example of a full-grown adult. Well, I thought it would be bigger, but it is kind of cute. Bats are not these scary monsters often portrayed in Hollywood. They're actually quite beneficial to man. A single bat will eat its own weight in insects each and every night. Well, that might not sound like a lot, but when you take a colony of 100,000 bats and multiply the weight of each bat times the number of each bat, it's not long before you're in the hundreds of pounds of insects each night. People have been afraid of bats because they knew so little about them. Do you remember the video we saw in class last week of a wildlife biologist in a cave full of bats? Yeah. yeah. Well, she sent me a CD updating some of her research. If I can have the computer, I'll show you some of her work. Bats are the only mammal that can truly fly. Here in the south, we have at least 15 species of bats. Bats are nocturnal, meaning they come out at night to feed on insects, and during the day they roost or sleep. Some bats can be found underneath the loose bark of trees or in a tree hollow, where other bats live in colonies. These colonies may be found in a cave, in an abandoned mine, or an old house. And over here, we have a small colony of bats. In this cave, we have two endangered bats, the Indiana bat and the gray bat. Endangered means that if we don't help save these species, they could go extinct. So how do they protect the bats? Well, let's see what Terry has to say about that. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is a federal agency that is responsible for listing and recovery of threatened and endangered species. And part of protecting endangered species is protecting their habitat. And here at this cave, Blowing Wind National Wildlife Refuge, we have endangered gray bats and endangered Indiana bats. And in order to protect those bats, we put up this gate. And this gate allows the bats to fly in and out while stopping humans from entering the cave. Let's continue down the passage. Everyone, keep your eyes open for other critters living here. Ooh. Hey, look, there's a cave crayfish, and it's all white. Yeah, I see how white it is. Mm -hmm. Not like the crayfish on the surface. They're green. Mm. That's not the only difference from the surface variety. The cave crayfish have no eyes, so they can't see. They're blind. But if you're in a cave where there's no light, why would you need to grow eyes? If you can't see or be seen, then why would you need color? The surface variety needs the color to hide from their predators. But inside, underground, you wouldn't need the camouflage. Mm -hmm. And you know that some scientists have theorized that cave crayfish live as long or longer than we do? Huh, that's strange. Hey guys, come on over here. Check this out. 
Looks like something in the water making its way through. Could be a cavefish. Oh, wow, that's oh, neat. Cool. That's neat. Must be something else in the water, too. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's a great find, Freddy. As you can see, the southern cavefish is white like the cave crayfish, and they're blind as well. Yeah. But the real find here is the other animal, oh, okay. and that's the Alabama cave shrimp, which is a very rare and endangered species that's really? only known to exist in Madison County, Alabama. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's only other known relative is the Kentucky cave shrimp that's found in Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. Oh. So this is a rare That's treat. That's really neat. Yeah, awesome. Go cool. and see it. Well, yeah. let's continue on down the passage and oh. see what Mother Nature has in store for us. Okay, okay let's, let's go. go. Gather around. I have a cross-sectional view of a mountain with a cave in it. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, for years, people used to just dump their household trash, broken appliances, mm -hmm. and other things down the sinkhole. Well, what they didn't realize was well, they were poisoning their own water supply. Oh, that's true. Rainfall would then collect into a stream and flow down to the sinkhole that was filled with the trash. There, the water would become polluted and continue flowing down the cave. At the bottom of the cave, landowners would dig a well where they believed was a clean supply of drinking water. But eventually, over time, the water became polluted and unsuitable for drinking. Hmm. Hey, guys. There's some really pretty cave down here. You want to go see it? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Look at how they just fly out of the sky. 